And now I'm going to invite somebody on to supplement that with some more information. We have to see if he can do better than that video because we're going to hear from another of the partners. His name is Felix Weckers. He is director of R&D at BioBest Group, which specializes in sustainable crop management. And he has been working on functional agrobiodiversity for three decades. He holds also a professorship, I love this, in plant insect interactions. So if you could please join me, Felix, that would be wonderful. I yes. think you're going to be spotlit alongside me. Yes, you are. There you are. That was a great video. Um, I do just pull out. I know you've got a presentation, so I will I will give you the floor in a moment. But I think it's important to say one of it. One of the things that's critical, of course, and it was mentioned there is this is also all about the next generation of farmers. So that is very, very important. And we know that's very significant in the EU. But uh, perhaps you could expand on what we heard there in the video, and I will listen intently. Thank you very much, Felix. Okay, thank you, uh, Katrina. Uh, I, I would like to give a little background. Huh? The, the FOP and functional agrobiodiversity has been mentioned uh, several times. I would like to give a little background on what functional agrobiodiversity really may, uh, consists of and, and how it is uh, slightly different from just general biodiversity. Uh, functional agrobiodiversity is actually targeted biodiversity management with the aim to support sustain sustainable farming. And so with functional agrobiodiversity, we're looking at interactions between agriculture and biodiversity. And usually uh, it's a, a negative story where people say agriculture has a negative impact on biodiversity. But in fact, we turn the, the story around and we look at the positive impact that biodiversity can have on agriculture. And we do so by focusing on ecosystem services provided by biodiversity. And we will show farmers thereby that biodiversity can actually work for farming and for agricultural production. Examples of such biodiversity uh, ecosystem services that farmers rely on is, for instance, pollination, natural pest control, uh, but also nutrient cycling and uh, pathogen control. So within the Interac project Fabulous Farmers, um, we focus on those organisms that actually provide a range of services that support agricultural production. And we're talking about services in addition to uh, pest control and pollination, soil quality, water quality, uh, erosion control, and climate regulation. And all, all these services are vital for uh, uh, a productive agricultural system. We have to keep in mind, if we talk about functional agrobiodiversity, that not all biodiversity is FAP. There are elements uh, in, in, uh, among plants and uh, or other organisms that are not necessarily welcome on agricultural fields. And we can think of agricultural pests, we can think of weeds, we can think of, of diseases. And those we would like not to support. And in order to uh, do so, we need to take this targeted approach. So how do we realize services? Traditionally, there is the paradigm that we enhance diversity and uh, we're talking about a number of organisms. We try to get that number as high as possible. And somehow that higher number then translates into ecosystem services. It has been tested to see if that approach, that uh, simple approach actually works. And there's a number of meta analysis studies that have looked at the uh, interactions between diversity and ecosystem services. And a good example uh, uh, is a study by David Endow looking at the impact of botanical diversity, so the diversity of plants and natural pest control. And he looked at a whole range of studies and showed that the effects are variable. In about half of the studies, you see that if you diversify your, uh, your agro ecosystem, you indeed reduce pest population. So that's great. But in a third of the cases, we see there's no effect or the effects are variable. 
And in 15% of the cases, you actually see an increase in your pest problems if you increase your botanical diversity. So we can see that it, it's very, uh, uh, that, that there's a lot of variation in the effects. And this of, is of course very difficult to, to, uh, to sell to your stakeholders, to the farmers, because you would have to say, okay, maybe it works, but if you're unlucky, then you will actually get more pest problems. So we need to do better and we really need to understand what's going on and understanding what's going on you can do by looking at the different organisms that uh, supply the ecosystem services. So here, for instance, the ladybird that uh, controls pests, the bumblebee that uh, pollinates the, the crops, or here the, uh, the uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria or the, uh, the fungi that control diseases. And we, we try to understand what are the requirements of these vital organisms and how can we support them? And at the same time, not support organisms that are harmful to agricultural production. So rather than taking a approach, which is a one size fits all, we actually like to go to a tailor-made approach uh, in the agro ecosystem to support uh, the beneficial organisms. An example to show you that this tailored approach really is necessary. If we, we've done some studies where we looked at flower mixtures that are targeted towards natural enemies. So the, the, the ones providing pest control and we compared those to flower mixtures that are commercially available for pollinators. And then we looked at which insects would be visiting these flower mixtures. And if you look at the, the bumblebees, the pollinators, they do uh, uh, visit the pollinator mix, but we don't see the bumblebees back on the biocontrol uh, flowers at all. Vice versa, the uh, parasitic wasps that provide biocontrol, pest control services, we do find them in high numbers in the biocontrol mix, but we don't find these wasps uh, uh, on the bumblebee, on the pollinator mix flowers. And the uh, hoverflies, which are a bit of a pollinator and a bit of a biocontrol agent, we see that they use both groups of flowers. This shows you that if you just randomly select flowers, you may be missing out on vital ecosystem services that these farmers need. So by having this targeted approach where we support uh, uh, beneficial insects or also support uh, soil organisms, we can create a positive spiral where by using the right flowers, we increase biodiversity, but more importantly, we also increase functional biodiversity. Uh, and this functional biodiversity then delivers pollination and natural pest control. And especially by controlling the pests, the farmer needs to use far less, far uh, fewer pesticide applications and this reduction in pesticide use, which can be quite dramatic is a very important secondary factor enhancing biodiversity in general and functional biodiversity. In our large scale projects that we have run over the years in several European countries, we have shown that the informed use of functional agrobiodiversity agro on commercial farms increases biodiversity. It can reduce pesticide use by 90% and that's uh, over a period of more than 10 years, it can increase yields by 10 to 30%. In, additional, in addition, FEP measures can help improve soil quality and nutrient retention. It reduces erosion and contributes to water quality. So FAP supports productive farming while contributing to key conservation and policy objectives. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. I'm just going to uh, wait to uh, for your slides to be removed. Yeah. So there we go. So thank you so much. And do you know what, Felix? I, I really scared you, didn't I? Because I was supposed to play a video first and do the teaser, and then you were going to amplify, and I switched. And I think you were a bit like, you jumped right in. But thank you, because I actually think it helps the audience to hear in more detail and then to have a bit of a recap. So thank you for giving us that there. That's very, very helpful. Mm -hmm.